My name is Jeff Ramsey. I'm the new co-owner of Cafe Racer in Seattle. Cafe Racer is a unique uh, spot in Seattle. There's nothing like it. Cafe Racer is a bar, cafe, coffee shop, um, entertainment venue uh, that caters to the artistic, the artistically minded, people that love art and music and uh, name it. Uh, Cafe Racer opened as Lucky Dog Espresso back in 2004. And for about a year, it was this little tiny coffee shop that sold a couple of draft beers and baked goods and coffee. Um, it changed its name to Cafe Racer um, and then sort of it expanded beyond the little space and uh, it started doing music, literary events, art events. And so in 2005, I started doing a art night here. And one night a month, we would sort of feature all these up and coming or unknown artists. And so that's really how my relationship with Cafe Racer started. That killing spree in Seattle, we're learning new details about the man who went on a shooting rampage at a coffee shop before then opening fire in the streets. ABC's Neil Karlinski has the latest. Neil? Police say the shooter was 40-year-old caught on surveillance cameras with what looks like a gun near his waist. They say his rampage began around 11 a.m. when he walked into this Seattle cafe in the middle of a neighborhood and opened fire. And then in 2012, um, there was a tragic shooting um, at the cafe. There was a mentally ill man who, um, who had been known to the people at the cafe. Uh, but he came in one morning. It was uh, May 30th, 2012. And uh, killed four people, uh, four regulars who were at the bar, who were all artists and musicians and actors, um, and shot the chef. And then went on a run and ended up taking his own life when the police closed in. So it was this very tragic moment. The previous owner likes to say, you know, Cafe Racer had 15 glorious years and one really bad day. And that's kind of how it was. Um, there was a tremendous outpouring of love and uh, grief and support from the community when that happened. And so Cafe Racer was able to stay open for another four years. Um, and then Cafe Racer closed October 18th of 2017. My wife actually sent me a Facebook post saying, hey, tonight's the last night at Cafe Racer. And I felt, literally I felt like the wind was knocked out of me. I thought, um, yes, I certainly had a certain amount of love for this place, but I also felt like it was really important, uh, both as a living memorial to the people who passed away and uh, to the arts community in Seattle as a whole. Um, you know, back in the early 80s, um, to, to early 90s, there were these little sort of quirky art joints everywhere. There were bars or galleries or whatever that would host punk rock shows and you know have spray paint art. And so there was a there was a, a really thriving art scene at that time, and that's sort of waned a bit in Seattle. Seattle's become um, well economically, things have been going extremely well for Seattle, but with that comes some sort of sterility and some scrubbing clean of, of the dirty corners. And um, so the dive bar, the real traditional dive bar, not the ones that, that are created as if they're new, but they're, they're supposed to be old. Um, those kind of places are all closing in Seattle. And so uh, we felt that, that it was really important to Seattle, the art community as a living memorial to keep the doors open. Um, and then we reopened March 1st of 2018. So we've been here just a little bit over a year right now. So my, art, my childhood was always filled with art. I'm a musician, I, uh, I used to do street art, you know, it wasn't tagging, it was street art. Um, and so I, I've always been, part, it's always been part of my life. And so I've always been connected to that community. And uh, I just felt like um, 
for me, and my wife is, is very similar. She's very passionate about art and, and giving a, a voice and a, um, a platform for artists. And so, yeah, that was, that was a big part of why we bought this place, is just to keep that going. There's a limited number of gallery walls for artists in Seattle. And um, so while you'll find art uh, in a lot of coffee shops and things like that, we wanted to do something that was, um, again, more intentional. So we created a, a gallery space that uh, features local artists every other month. Um, and then in between the local featured artists will do pop-ups. So this, these are for artists who are maybe have a small collection, don't quite have enough to fill a gallery yet, but they've got four or five pieces that we find really interesting or exciting. We're part of the University District Art Walk, um, which is the third Friday of every month. So there's a number of, there's a couple of galleries and there's a number of um, the venues like ours that, that do art as well. So one of the things that Cafe Racer was really known for is um, the official Bad Art Museum of Art, or the Obama. And uh, it used to be sort of in the main um, dining and, and stage area, and it was sort of, you know, packed into little corners and sort of around. And when we reopened, we had this amazing sort of space in the, to the back of the cafe that felt like the new home for the Obama. It was like a way to feature the Obama and, uh, and give it its own little home. My name is Marlo Harris, and I'm the creator and curator of the official Bad Art Museum of Art, also known as Obama. And uh, we all started it in 2008, right before the election and we were really excited about opening this bad art museum. And we didn't plan to call it Obama, but we were so excited about that election that we thought, wouldn't that be fun if we could somehow incorporate that into, and then my husband came up with the great idea, Official Bad Art Museum of Art, and the acronym is Obama. So we call this the Obama Room. But it was originally located downstairs in the cafe. It was the entire front area. And when the new owners took over last year, we moved it up here to the penthouse of Cafe Racer. I've always had a fascination with kitsch and bad art. And when my friend Kurt bought this place uh, 11 years ago, he said, what do I do with this extra room? I'm going to expand. And I said, well, paint it uh, some crazy colors or do this or that, or put a bad art museum in there. And he said, bad art museum? OK, you're the new curator. So I, I took that as a challenge, and so I came up with, with this. So it was kind of a, an installation, and I've done that a few times in the past around the city. So it was something that I've done before, and I rose to the occasion. So bad art isn't um, like a child's drawing, because they don't have the training. And, and bad art isn't um, something intentionally made bad. It's something that people, where they put forth their best effort, and it's still a little off. You know, the, the grandma painting with the nose kind of sideways or the, you know, the, the in, unsymmetrical, you know, limbs, that sort of thing. It's people showing their best effort and just not quite getting it right. Kurt Geisel, the original owner, has always been an artist and I've always uh, admired that, that he's trying to create an art space, another space, a third place where you could go that wasn't your home and it wasn't really a place of business, it was some place in between. So I loved that idea and I was really happy to be a part of it. I've never been a minimalist, I've always been an, an extralist and had too much stuff. Not a hoarder, I'm a collector and I've always been collecting this stuff anyway so I was really happy to find a place to kind of put my, my vision and my creations and my collections um, for, for people who would enjoy it and appreciate the eclectic uh, design. And this room has become uh, the cool kids hangout. Like we have so many meetups here. We have everything from 
uh, Dungeons and Dragons groups to we have these Catan groups that come in all the time to play games. Uh, we have coders that meet up here. We have something called the Seattle Psychedelic Society, which meets every Wednesday. And what they do is they study um, uh, the use of psychedelics as therapy medicines. Um, yeah, it's just, it's fun. It's just this great, funky, quirky, lovely little space. It was sort of by default that we got back into the cafe. We sort of wormed our way in to, to the space and agreed that we would make it look, you know, look good. And so we painted, and we painted the floor. It took us about 100 hours to hand paint the leopard skin floor. And then I got really excited about the looks, and I started making these pillows out of random pieces of cloth that I had, and old sheets, and stuff, you know, bathrobe. It's like a bathrobe, I think, that I made this. But I got excited about, you know, just making it all kind of an immersive art space and they let us do it. They gave us free reign, and for that, I'll always be grateful. I added lights and, and whatnot, but most of this is from my own personal collection, um, except for some of the major pieces like Jesus of Peeps, which is a portrait of Jesus done in marshmallow peeps. But most of it's either found art or recreated by me or my husband, Joe. That's kind of cool. You asked how, how does it feel to have this space used by lots of different people for playing Parcheesi or making art or uh, doing their homework. or And I have to say that I uh, get so much more out of it than they possibly could because just coming up here sometimes and watching people interact with the art and just seeing their faces and seeing like, like kids just being fascinated, I get a kick out of that. And I'm so glad to be able to share this with people and have them be amused and if I can bring a little joy to people's day just by sharing my vision with them, I get a kick out of it. So being part of this community here at Cafe Racer has helped me grow as a person. I've been the happiest here and I've been the saddest in my entire life in this place. And I've experienced the, the range of emotions, but it's ultimately everything that's happened here has um, has added a positive note to my life. Now, in retrospect, I can see that being here has been a very good thing for everyone in my family. It was, there was a time when I thought that it was closed forever and lost, and now it's sort of like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It's a place of beauty and hope again, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. So the thing about Cafe Racer is, I. I'm in my mid-50s, I've owned a lot of businesses, I've owned nightclubs and fancy hotel bars, and I've done all kinds of different things. And when this came up and, and we had the opportunity to come back in, I thought, okay, I'm coming back into this industry that I know, um, but I've been out of for a long time. And I have never owned a business like this. This business is so unique. The, the people that come here, we have the best customers in Seattle. They're just, everybody talks to everybody. Uh, but everybody gets along, yeah. you know? It's this beautiful sort of um, melting pot of characters. And Cafe Racer provides this amazing sort of lovely warm place for everybody just to be themselves. And nobody is not welcome here. Everybody is welcome. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I come to work every day and I'm just happy, you know? I'm just plain happy.